When I mention the word Kabbalah, you probably think of a few things. I'm going to go ahead and wager that you think about the diagram of the Kabbalistic Tree of Life in a variety of forms. Maybe if you think about ritual, you think about the Hermetic Order of the Golden Dawn, because that tends to be what more people are familiar with. However, there are actually practices in the general antiquated Kabbalah, and today we're going to cover one that comes right from the Zohar. Yeah, it really does. And it's right there. The simple candle. Seems very unassuming. Might not be that impressive outrightly, but in general practice, it's considered a very, very prominent and important meditative practice in Judaic Kabbalah. What we're going to do today is we're going to break it down. I'm going to give you some insights in how to engage with it, and it's going to surprise you because it's actually mostly mental and metaphysical. It has little to do with motions, names, or movements. Of course, when it comes to the idea of Yehudim, it can be incorporated, but that's not really what we're doing here right now. I'm going to give you the metaphysical basis, and you can try it for yourself. Now, I just want to say, if you enjoy the video, feel free to like and subscribe. I'd greatly appreciate it. Moving this channel forward. With all that being said, my name is River, and welcome to the Nimitan. So I've cropped this talk up into two major segments, symbolism and practice. I recommend taking the time to become intimately familiar with the symbolism because it runs parallel to understanding what we will be doing on the practical side of things. Taking a look at the burning candle, let's point out the pieces of importance for this discussion. We have three main components. First, the wick. Second, the blue, sometimes called black light. And lastly, the white light. Yet, there is also a fourth hidden piece, which I'm going to call the radiant or luminous. Now, each, as you'd expect, is symbolic in a variety of ways, and we'll start at the bottom, working upward. The wick is pretty straightforward. It's the material. We might even say that it's all of material reality. And the material wick is important symbolically because for the fire to burn, it must be connected to something for it to exist. And the fires will consume or burn away the material in the process of combustion. Now this action is noted in the Zohar through the Torah phrasing, Hashem your Elohim is a consuming fire. However, in many cases, you are individually the wick because through you the fires can burn, which will be looked at a little later in the discussion. The blue or black light of the fire is couched or connected to the material form, resting on top of it. To the Kabbalist, this blue light represents the feminine forces, the divine presence if you will and most notably, the nukva, or feminine aspect of Zeron Peen. Noting all these items I've just thrown out, you might suspect that this is the second He of yod heh and is tied to Malkut, which is correct. In this particular case, the lesser revelation of Malkut is the wick we were talking about earlier, onto which it attaches. You, reality, etc. Personally, I like to call the wick and blue-black light relationship the bridge, Yet, in the Zohar, it is properly called the Throne. This throne has a multitude of mentions throughout Kabbalistic text and Torah philosophy. Yet, I will just say that blue is the coloration in reference to the Throne, Divine Presence, or as often said, the Shekinah. Interestingly, the blue or black light can sometimes shift into a red, but essentially will always return to this blue state and serves no purpose for this particular discussion. Now. Connected to and fused above the blue light is the white light that most people would normally consider just the candle flame. Yet, by symbol, this portion of the fire is Zeron Peen and the Vav of yod heh vav -Heh. The thing about Zeron Peen is that he represents the expected extent of human perception of the divinity. To explain, even when we conceptualize or visualize loftier matters, it's always through the human lens. It's basically a diminished form of revelation. Our understanding of Kether does not supersede the metaphysical nature of it, nor does it encompass it, hence why I use the phrasing of a diminished form of revelation. Then of course, there is the fourth hidden light, and it is the majorly invisible radiance dimly shining off the skirts of the white light that I've also seen it be referential to the luminous glow that radiates off the fire, at distance. 
what we might call the actual light of the candle. From the bottom-up perspective, it is, in essence, the result or achievement of the burning candle, which is union. It's kind of a byproduct and uh, the end goal. And from the top-down perspective, it is, in short, the more arcane forces at play. Now that we've looked at the pieces, let's take a step back and look at the burning candle as a whole. We have essentially one thing, which is the symbolic fusion of the material to the immaterial, the mundane to the spiritual, the physical to the metaphysical. Earlier in the talk, this is why I said that I like to call the blue-black light the bridge, because together, they all make up this single spiritual revelation. On one level, this is all a metaphor for how you as an individual can express the divinity outward by being alighted, or in the most theological sense by being spiritually active through the performance of something like mitzvahs and kosher activity. On another level, it's an analogy for how the divine force has created the material world as a means of rectification. On a third level, it is a means of conceptualizing the elevation of one's own spirit to higher levels. Clearly though, depending on who you ask, these three items and ideas are intimately related and could honestly be said to be the same thing. I want to thank you all who have made it this far, so what I can do is share a small piece of one of my own revelations through this exact practice that was immensely foundational to me being who I am now, or as some know it, the Nemeton Mask. Now that we've covered all the metaphysics and all that, you might be wondering, what do I do now? How do I actually engage with this at all? You've just described to me symbolism, essentially, right? Well, the trick is, when you're meditating on the candle flame, which is what I expect you to do, light one comfortably, preferably in a darkened space, focus on it and get an idea of what's going on, and look at these pieces that I've described to you. Think about their metaphysical interrelations. Consider them. And in that consideration, there is supposed to be revelation. Your particular revelation, I cannot tell you what it will be because it tends to be very, very personal. Anyways, after all that, I just want to say a massive thank you to my friends, patrons, and supporters. I appreciate you more than you know, and I hope you have fantastic success with this antiquated Kabbalistic meditation. I'll see you next time.